When somebody's the president of the United States, the authority is total. And that's the way it's got to be. If Trump were to try to tell some state that they needed to reopen businesses before the governor was willing to do that, he could not get away with that. Not overtly. The president has at least some degree of control over the federal workforce. And so it's possible that he could order federal employees back to their offices. But when it comes to overriding local and state orders that are shutting down small businesses and that are closing schools, no, there's no direct authority for the president to say, I disagree, I am overriding you. We're in a position where almost all of the coercive authorities that have been undertaken in response to the coronavirus pandemic have been coercive authorities at the local and state level, where it's our mayors and our governors who are really the line of first defense. And that matters for purposes of the federal constitutional law, because insofar as these orders started with the governors and the mayors, they really also principally have to end there as well. There's no general authority on the part of the president to say, I don't like what Governor Cuomo or Governor Abbott is doing, and so I'm just going to override it. It really has to be something the federal government had the authority to do in the first place and did for the president to be the one to pull it back. What I think is so confounding and confusing about the various responses to the coronavirus pandemic is that the federal government really hasn't used most of the powers it has when it comes to this kind of a public health crisis, where if we had actually seen more aggressive assertions of authority by the federal government, it would make more sense for the president to say, I have the power to scale this back. We'd be in a very different position if Congress had passed a statute that said during a national public health crisis, the president has the power to you know, force businesses that affect interstate commerce to close, and the president was either using or not using his powers under that statute. But Congress has never passed a statute like that. And so I think we have to separate out the question of whether the federal government as a whole could theoretically exercise that kind of power. And there I think the answer is yes versus whether under current law, the president can unilaterally exercise that kind of power, where the answer is unequivocally no.